of content, explain the concept of standard conditions, explain the difference between mortgage bond and mortgage loan in other words. Evaluate a mortgage bond over immovable property as security for debt or loan and evaluate different types of properties in terms of the requirements for good security. Demonstrate knowledge and understanding of securities in the context of mortgage finance. The introduction of the mortgage bond, the mortgage bond is simply a loan that is secured on an immovable property. I'm not going to read everything because I think, as I said, we went through it several times. Um, this, I think, if I just wrap it up, so I'm going to touch on it. Please stop me if you want to ask questions that we can explain, please. Features of a mortgage bond, first time buyers. I think this is very important. Um, you will see on some of the um, pro, um, information that I loaded last week was the FLIS, not FLIPS, FLIS um, reg real estate regulations. That is from National Housing. Um, so for the people who have never owned a property or had a home loan before, a special home loan is available whereby the banks will lend them more than 100% of the property value. This will allow them to include the transfer and registration cost into the home loan, making it easier for them to enter the property market. No deposit is required with this option. Not all the banks um, at all times will uh, um, then is national housing is Am I back? Hello? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, National Housing has an offer where um, if your current income, household income, is less than around 21,000 rand a month and you've never owned any property before, then they will give you a grant. But that grant is actually very good. It comes from 3,001 to 21,000 rand. So for a 3,001 rand salary income, household income, the grant is close to, um, I think the last time that I saw was 89 or 90,000 rand, but that money gets paid into your home loan or to the uh, registration attorney, and that will come down from your initial bond. And the first money that will go off will be your co uh, transfer cost, and thereafter um, it will reduce the uh, your payment actually because your bond will come down. So it is a very good option to have. Um, I can. Uh, maybe tomorrow evening, go through the PLIS uh, program with you to tell you how exactly how it works. It's a very good option to use. Although it's a, um, they do say that they give you an answer within two weeks, it can happen that you run out of time for a bond approval, and therefore we advise that um, the client applies for the 100% loan, including the transfer cost and then carry on with the registration whilst waiting for national housing. Because once they approve it, that money gets paid into the bond again, and then we can uh, uh, request uh, a reduce in the repayment price. Um, so there is a very good option. Variable home loan. This is just a normal home loan, which is given at a negotiated interest rate. Home loans rates are always negotiable and are generally affected by the amount of the loan taken out. The smaller loan, the smaller the loan, the less chance you have to get below the prime lending rate. Flexi bond, this, with this type of home loan, the interest rate is fixed for a period of time, usually for one or two years. Uh, one thing to bear in, my, bear in mind with this option is that the interest rate will be slightly higher than the current home loan rate. One good advantage is that it protects people from ri rising interest rates. So for that period of time, 
they know what their bond repayments are. The only downside is if the interest rates drop, your home loan rate will stay unchanged. That's costing you more at the end of the day. And I think Anna mentioned something on Thursday is that they advise people now to fix their um, home loan um, repayment uh, premium. Although you must keep in mind the, the interest rate can be like 7%, but if you fix it, it can go up to 9%, but then it stays at 9%. If it happens within six months or two years' time, interest rates go to 14%, you will then still be on 9% or the, what the bank offers you. Capped bond. With, with this type of home loan, your interest rate is capped at a maximum rate of interest for a period of time. So you will never pay more than the capped rate. If the interest rate increase, you will never pay more than the capped rate you have negotiated. A good thing about this option is that you will enjoy the benefits if the rates in decrease. Please note, this type of home loan is not always available and certain criteria is required before the banks will approve your application. Um, mentioned discussion, bond choices. The major four banks, bank institutions of South, South Africa offers a variety of bonds for people as discussed above. However, they also offer different pro products to their clients. Now, the different products um, as you know, Anna explained to us what is the different products, and I think we will bring her back at the later stage to explain more, or we can even have somebody at the bank to come and explain exactly how the different other options are working, because it also varies from time to time. Now, the fixed interest rate, a fixed interest rate is agreed upon interest rate that is fixed, does not change over a predetermined period of time. Please note that the fixed rate option is contracted for a specific term. After this term, the rate will revert back to a variable interest rate unless the buyers opt to renew the fixed rate option at the rate offered at the time of renegotiating. It is therefore important for investors to monitor the variable interest rate fluctuations to prepare themselves should the variable rate at the end of the fixed rate contract period be much higher than the fixed rate. Variable interest rate, a variable interest rate is a fluctuation, fluctuating rate based on the mortgage lending rate as set by the bank from time to time, even though the mortgage le lending rate is generally the same as the prime lending rate, it does not necessarily have to be the same. If interest rates change, so, so does your monthly repayment. Your example, uh, at 10%, it will be 4,825, at 11%, is 5,100. 5,161 at 12% 5,505 but then it's fixed fast forward interest rate fast forward is a innovative home loan account management option that allows clients to automatically increase their home loan installments on an annual basis this annual increase will result in the rapid reduction of outstanding balances on the home loan, resulting in significant interest savings. Activity mortgage features. Um, now, we've spoken about the different options, flexi reserve, multi-plan, and further advance. So I think if you can try to do this activity on your own or in the group, it will be uh, good. Activity calculation of repayment of mortgage. The facilitator will divide you into groups to calculate the mortgage bond on for the following rates. Um, Mr. Johnson purchased a property for value of 850000 Calculate the repayment value for a period of five years at a fixed 9%. Um, oh, sorry. I think we will come back to all this um, on the practical side and work it out. Is that okay? Yes, it is. Thanks, Alex. The mortgage process, purchasing a property and applying for a bond can be a very stressful and lengthy process. To help you to understand it better and to be able to assist your clients professionally, we listed below the entire process and who is involved. And this is a very good uh, example, actually. Uh, when 
property is purchased on a cash basis, the contract of sale usually provides for the, for the payment of a deposit by the purchaser on signature of the contract with the balance of the purchase price payable against the registration of transfer. Payment of, the, of a deposit is not, however, a legal requirement and the contract may state that the full purchase price is payable on transfer of the property to the purchaser. Now, that is the general conditions. Uh, module 1, an estate agent must be, uh, this is the learner's note, an estate agent must be acquainted with the various forms of security available to a purchaser or a receipt of immovable property. The successful conclusion of a contract of sale often depends entirely on whether the purchaser can obtain finance for the transaction. This in return depends on whether the purchaser can provide the creditor example, the personal financial institution lending money to the purchaser with sufficient security for the fulfillment of his obligations. So we did see that there is options where you can um, write into the contract is subject to the sale of their own properties or uh, maybe you are going to make a big profit on your sale of your property and you only want to deposit a portion of that money, you can also do so. Um, and if it's a full 100% bond, um, you will just like, you know, that the full uh, purchase price will be paid on date of transfer. Mortgage and home loan application submission. The mortgage broker submits the application to various lenders. That's why we prefer to make use of mortgage brokers because they are taking quite a, a, a load from our shoulders and to complete the forms. Uh, in the instance, sometimes they do have a, 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 a one form that the uh, purchasers can complete and it can cover most of the financial institution. Approval in principle, the bank approves the loan subject to a property valuation and sometimes with other conditions attached, um, like for in case they give you a quotation now and you must at, uh, at approve the quotation and then they will still tell you maybe there's building plans or whatever they need. They can add different types of conditions. And also the valuation and evaluation in this instance will be done through a sworn valuator. And after the, that, they will issue you a final approval letter from the bank to say what is all the conditions. Any questions up to here? Banks do not levy any charge to consider an application for mortgage bond finance. However, before the finance will be approved, the financial institution will carry out an inspection of the property to determine its value and general conditions. And then they will charge you that there is a charge towards your home loan. They will just add it on there uh, to do all, everything once it has been approved. So they don't charge prior, they only charge on the approvals. Mortgage bond clauses in contracts of sale. The mortgage bond clause in an agreement of sale usually takes the form of a suspensive condition that the purchaser is able to raise a loan of not less than an X amount by or on a certain date upon security of the first mortgage bond to be passed over the property. Approval of the bond, um, that is uh, no, uh, the standard clause that can come get into the contract that you write in and it's a suspensive condition that the purchaser or seller or the estate agent on behalf of the purchaser obtains approval not later and please write out the date as it's set and the amount in words and in writing. The following general principle concerning bond clauses must be observed. A condition stating that a bank or similar bond must be obtained means that the condition is fulfilled if the institution or person with a different identity to a bank offers a loan to the purchaser on terms similar to those normally given by banks. The seller himself could therefore make the loan available to the purchaser provided this is done on terms normally laid down by the banks. The identity of institution granting the loan may be of importance to the purchaser especially if, there is, if he receives a subsidy on his loan repayments. Civil surgeons, for example, are subsidized only on loans granted by the bank or other financial institutions. A condition providing that the sale is subject to the 
position by the purchaser of a bond is not fulfilled, then the loan is approved, but only when it is actually obtained. It must be determinable from the wording of the bond clause on which terms the loan is to be advanced to the purchaser. And one thing that you must take in a, uh, consideration, if the bank comes to you and say that they do approve a bond conditionally, maybe for interest rates or other, co other I will say, nitty-gritty conditions, and you as the purchaser does not accept that, you are then actually in breach. So that is why we prefer to do the mortgage originators because they can apply, uh, they submit at all the banks at once and then you as the purchaser can pick and choose actually uh, with whom, we, or with which bank you are going ahead and um, also negotiate the best interest rate on their behalf. But yes, you are actually obliged if, if the loan was approved conditionally only on the interest rates uh, unless the interest rate is a ridiculous rate. Activity finance and estate agents' ethical obligations. The Code of Conduct lays down certain specific ethical rules which an estate agent must observe when arranging finance for a purchaser. Complete the following in terms of the Code of Conduct. No estate agent may with regards to finance. Can we try to do this or give an answer to this three? Who's going to take on first? Dimakatsu? If you apply on behalf of your client, Yes, I'm listening to you, but there's, there's a rain, dead rain. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you clearly. Um, so you were saying the client is doing what? Okay, the code of conduct, that is of the State Agents Affairs Board, lays down certain specific ethical rules which an estate agent must observe when, fi when arranging finance for a purchaser. Complete the following. The terms of the code, no estate agent may with regards to financing. Okay. Um, I think the first one, Rina, no estate agent may, may um, suggest which bank maybe the, the client can use and which not to use. I oh, because we are not part. FSP, yes, we are not FSP, so we cannot give advi uh, uh, advice, no? you are right. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, something to add on? Uh, no estate agents may, with regards to financing, take a bribe <laughs> to, to arrange <laughs> financing for this. <laughs> For the client. <laughs> well, yes, definitely we are not allowed to take a bribe, although sometimes we feel like it, yes. <laughs> True. And also, it's your uh, privacy, ne? That you must keep the client's details private. You are not allowed yes. to hand it out. Okay, that's fine. We can just go ahead. The rights and obligations of parties and such agent may be asked by the parties to explain to them what the Act requires requires of them once an installment sale is concluded. The position can be summarized as follows. The seller's position, the seller must furnish the buyer with a copy of the agreement within 30 days after its conclusion. The seller is not entitled to charge for making the copy of to recover port portage from the purchaser. If the property is mortgaged, the seller must furnish the purchaser within 30 days of the conclusion of the contract with a certificate drawn up by each bondholder in which it is stated what amount the bondholder requires for the discharge of the bond, as well as the rate of which interest will be levied as from date of the certificate. Now, this is, um, if I didn't say it yet, but it's very important to remember. When you go out to a property to say uh, list the property and to get the mandate from the property, 
You must advise your seller to inform and notify his bondholder of his intention of selling the property. And he must do that every three months. So that property is in the market now for six months, and you ask him, and he says, no, I did it. The moment I put it in the market six months ago, I did it. It doesn't work. You must keep on every three months resending that email, resending that email. Don't call them. Don't go there. Send the emails because that is your proof that you've done it. If they go there, they must get a person's name and email address. Email them that notification again so that you've got the proof. Otherwise, they're going to find that seller. So that is extremely important that they do it. Should the seller, fi oh, yeah. I, I just want to mention, say for instance, your purchaser is with FNB and the property has been bonded with APSA. It's also advisable to do APSA actually within your first group of applications to, for finance. And the reason for that is the banks intend um, trying to keep the loan with them, otherwise they have to pay out to the other banks. So um, the, we do see that sometimes the, the interest rate will be better and, um, you know, they will uh, more be more lenient um, to give out the bond than if it's just a bond starting from scratch. Should the seller fail to furnish the buyer with a certificate or if the amount indicated exceeds the amount of the purchase price, which the buyer must pay the seller in terms of the contract, the purchase and may cancel the contract within 14 days after receipt of the certificate, or if the seller fails to furnish the certificate after 30 days of conclusion of the contract. The seller must, free of charge, furnish the purchaser with a statement of accounting containing cert, uh, certain prescribed particulars, such as the balance of the purchase price and other costs owing in terms of the contract. Likely we are not using this uh, actually, um, this is something happened between the uh, attorneys um, from the bond attorney, the bond cancellation attorney. Now, who's, let, let's go back. Let, who's all the parties in registering a new bond? First, you get the new bond attorney, which the bank will appoint. You get the registration attorney. And then you get the cancellation attorney, the three attorneys, for the seller's bond to cancel that bond. So you've got three attorneys that must complete all the documentation and then uh, submit together um, at the um, deeds office. Now, the cancellation attorney is the attorney for the seller and um, he will then um, issue to the registration attorney the cancellation figure of the current bond. And that is where you must be very much awake and also advise your seller, get the statement from the re uh, registration attorney to prove what is the outstanding balance at your bond. Make sure that you don't get pa penalized. So the seller himself is not doing that, the attorney is doing that on his behalf. So you don't have to run around between banks and uh, issue certificates. Within 30 days of the conclusion of the contract, an intermediary must hand or send to the purchaser by registrar a certificate furnished by a person who sold the land to that intermediary and any, every other person who sold the land to a prior intermediary. I think we went through the contracts quite um, in depth. The purchaser's position if the property is sold, is mortgaged, the purchaser must be forthwith, after conclusion of the contract, notify the bondholder of the contract. You, mu you mustn't really wait till you get the buyer and the bond is uh, approved. You must do that immediately, 30 days prior selling, actually. You must also provide him with his address, chance of address, or any particulars. We know that standard practice in our contracts. If the property has been sold to a remote purchaser, the latter must forthwith notify the owner of the land of the conclusion of the contract. He must also furnish him with his address, chance of address, 
and the name and address of the any intermediary. Um, we are not actually, I won't say we are not allowed, but um, you know, in the contract, um, there is a clause requesting that they've seen the property and that they've satisfied themselves with the property. Also, that checklist of the uh, things not added and added. Um, so, if they haven't seen the property, it is a way out for the purchaser to say that, you know what, I believe what the agent advertised and everything, but now when I actually saw it at a later time, uh, I'm not very happy. He can actually use that to get out of the contract. The buyer may, up to three times a year, require any bond holder who holds a mortgage of the property to furnish him a certificate indicating the amount required for the discharge. Lately, we just asked for the uh, statements. Uh, I think the bank's statements are very clear and up to date on what is the outstanding amount, and then you can um, get the difference between what the title, the registration of the bond attorney, uh, what is the outstanding. In this way, the purchaser can ascertain whether or not the owner is fulfilling his obligation to the bond holder. Um, the owner can't, don't get any money as he bank, the uh, registration attorney gets all the money and distributes the money between all the parties. So um, the only obligation is that the purchaser uh, is doing is to sign the documentation and the attorneys between them will sort it out. And in my purchase, it might be written notice require the owner or any intermediary who sold the property before the remote purchase aborted to furnish him with all the particulars. Protection of the purchaser's interest, as stated earlier, the alienation of land act contains specific provisions and at protecting the interest of any installment self purchaser. These provisions apply only if the contract in question is governed by the act. When the property is attached or the owner becomes insolvent, if the owner of the property becomes insolvent, a judgment creditor of the owner, example, a bond holder, at attached the land, the purchaser must be notified of this. He is then entitled to immediate transfer of the property into his name, provided he makes acceptable arrangements to pay the transfer cost together with the balance of the purchase price or the amount of the attachment of insolvency cost, any endowment, enhancement or betterment, levy or development contribution which may be payable in respect of the property, as well as the balance of any loan secured by a mortgage over the property. If transfer is to be made, a remote purchaser, uh, all obligations between the intermediary and the owner of the property must also be fulfilled before transfer can be affected. Any questions? Mortgage bonds registered after conclusion of a contract, a bond holder whose bond is registered after a contract has been recorded is deemed to have consented irrevocably and unconditionally in favour of the purchaser to the discharge of the mortgage bond. This means that if a bond is registered over the property after the contract has been recorded, the buyer can obtain transfer without having to pay the bondholder the amount owing. In practice, this effectively restricts the registration of the mortgage bond over the property after an installment sale has been recorded. Preventing a seller from selling to more than one purchaser. Once a contract has been recorded, the property may not be transferred except to the buyer under the installment sale contract or prior intermediary unless the recording has been cancelled. Preventing a seller from selling to more than one purchaser, once a contract has been recorded, the property may not be transferred except to the buyer under, I think this is a duplicate, isn't it? Sorry for this. As explained earlier, a buyer of mortgage land on installment risk is at risk if the owner fails to fulfill his obligation to the bondholder. 
Similarly, a remote purchaser is at risk if an intermediary fails to fulfill his obligations to the seller. To avoid this, an installment sale purchaser, including a remote purchaser, is entitled to fulfill the obligations of the owner or intermediary if they fail to do so. Now, it's very, very important that if you sign an installment sale contract, it's a different contract for us from our ordinary contracts, and it's still under the 1981 uh, Property Law Act, is that you have to register that contract in the deeds office and attach it to the title deed. Um, that will cover you as the purchase uh, of the seller, knowing that the purchaser have to pay, and it will also cover your purchaser that the seller cannot uh, sell to anybody else. But however, say for instance that the bond amount to be paid to the bank is like 5,000 rand and you only pay 8,000 rand in uh, rent a month or interest, uh, a portion of that money goes down as a payment to the bank and the other portion um, it's like interest to the seller. Uh, because he's actually now giving you a two-year or whatever the terms is, uh, interest-free uh, uh, contract or lease in his property. So that will then be counted as like interest. The following provisions apply in this regard. A person is entitled to make payment before the due date of make large payments than those agreed on. And it's also advisable uh, that the purchaser pays the bond amount straight into the bond account because if the seller, in your instance, maybe uh, after six months time he doesn't like a face anymore, then he's still just stop paying the bond and then the house will be jeopardized um, and you cannot really do anything about it. Interest on the outstanding balance of the purchase price may not be calculated, calculated more often than monthly or less than quarterly. The property is not registrable. No person, person may receive an, any portion of the purchase price payable in terms of the contract until the property becomes registrable and the contract has been recorded. The seller may at any time arrange brokerage bond finance for the purchaser and require the purchaser to take transfer of the property uh, against registration of the mortgage bond. The loan is arranged for payment of all amounts owned by the purchaser to the seller in terms of the contract. Um, in, in terms of the bond are not more than one risk, those which apply at the time of transfer to similar bonds held by building society. Okay, the activity bond calculator. Um, can I just ask that all of you um, downloaded the Uber app? Yes, uh, I have. Okay, so please download it, play around with it so that you can get familiar with it so that if you do have a client, at least. Um, you know exactly how it works. In terms of the act, the seller is not entitled to enforce any provision of the contract, accelerate payment of any installment of the purchase price or any other penalty stipulation in the contract. Um, however, I've signed a few contracts and if we make, the, make it clear on the payment is that um, an X amount or whatever the amount is that is owed to the bond uh, that amount can be paid over uh, into the bond. Unless he okay, claim any damages from the purchaser, unless he has notified the purchaser uh, of the breach of contract by means of a letter, such letter contains a demand that the purchaser rectifies the breach within a stated period and the purchaser fails to comply with this demand. Evaluating a bond, Mortgage bond finance is the most popular way of financing a sale of immovable property. With this type of finance, a lender, for example, a bank or even the seller, agrees to lend the money to the purchaser on the basis that the purchaser must 
pass a mortgage once over his immovable property. Immovable property, furthermore, a bondholder has a prefer preferential claim to the proceeds of the property if it is sold subsequent to the mortgage, mortgage insolvency. That's when a bank holds a mortgage over a property and the owner is declared insolvent. The proceeds from the sale of the property would not be available to all the owners creditors equally. The bank will have a referential claim to the proceeds for the sale of the property in respect of the money due to it. Um, only if anything remains will the other creditors receive any payment. Activity, risk associated with mortgage bonds. Complete this activity on your own. You may refer to the co content provided above this section and the facilitator will allow for discussions when everyone has completed the activity. Answer the following questions if the space provided on the following page. What happens in the event of the mortgage writer is insolvent? What are the consequences of failure to pay installments? What or to what does the additional sum amount refer as indicated in the mortgage bond? Are we going to try this? So if the mortgage originator of the, uh, of the mortgage is insolvent, if that property gets sold on a sale of execution sale, what happens with the money that comes in? Can somebody help? Will it go to the, will the balance go to the, the bank? The, the money will originally go to the trustee and the trustee will work out and uh, because there is a time frame where the creditors must put their claims in and then according to the claims there will be percentage wise the monies will be paid out to the trustees first yeah, to the, yeah not to the, the trustee in that in, the trustee is the person who manage the account if I could say that right Okay. All right. What are the consequences of failure to pay installments? You don't pay your house bonds, what is going to happen? The, the property will be repossessed. Yeah. Uh, it will be repossessed and um, sold on um, sale of execution. To what does the additional sum amount refer as indicated in the mortgage bond? This is a nice one, actually. The banks normally, say for instance, you apply for a home loan for 800,000. They might turn around and say, okay, we're going to um, register a million. And that gives you a, a lead way that if it happens that you are in trouble, there will be enough coverage to on your bond. And only after that one million, they will actually then start to repossess your property. Okay. Legal controls, benefits, uh, repayment of the loan, the mortgage writer will, must repay the loan amount and interest to the mortgagee in terms of the loan agreement, use of the property, the mortgagee does not obtain the use of the mortgage property because this is retained by the mortgage writer. Oh my word, my tongue tonight. Subject to certain restrictions, example, the mortgage writer may not, without the consent of the mortgagee, grow.
Luna, are you still there? Is anyone there? Bridget, Cabello, are you guys there? Yeah, Alex. We are here, Alex. Oh, okay, okay. So I think it's just Rina who, um, yeah, I think just lost who is Rina. off. Yes. Okay. Would you like me to resume with the class? Yes, please. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> This one, I think it can be nice. What are what are the most common grounds on which a mortgage can be terminated? That uh, is okay. Of the registration, okay. or oh, after registration. Common grounds okay. of which a mortgage uh, can be terminated. Not paying the bond. Yes. Um. Can can a bond be, be terminated if 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 um, the people cancel their insurance? No, uh, not really terminated, but the bank can insist on the insurance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what if the bond was uh, was uh, obtained uh, fraudulently? Um, in the sense that, um, yeah. Yes, it can be because uh, I can actually mention, uh, it's good that you mentioned that one, Alex. It's quite interesting, actually. Um, there was a few years ago, um, around about 20, 2009, when was the stock at 2010? Yeah. In 2010. When was the stock again? The big stock? Yeah, yeah um, in 2010. Yeah. Now, in 2008-9, there was bonds approved for residential development by the Agricultural Bank. Um, a specific development in Seton de la is on the north coast of KZN. And how it, ha it was quite a few bonds that was actually approved. But now you must remember the Agricultural Bank uh, uh, laws or rules is that they only issue finance for agricultural purposes. And now somebody in their bank approved, paid and registered the bonds um, for, it is currently agricultural land, but you ch change the um, character to development, residential development. So it was not for agricultural use, actually it was for development. And that, that bonds were all cancelled then, all of them. In City Bell's uh, instance, they've done most of the services 
I think the original uh, bond was 240 something thousand rand, and they used up about 130, 100 and your, uh, or 20,000, and they couldn't get the balance from the agricultural bank, so they all, most of those developments went down. Mm. So yes, it can be terminated on that basis. Anything else? Okay. Um, Insol insolvency. Insolvency. There we go. Yeah. One more. Can can you say not, not declaring information? Yes, you can. Um, and it's also something that happened to me, and it was actually a lie from the purchaser, is that um, it was actually already at the deeds office, and on the date of registration, that morning, the attorney was on his way to the deeds office to sign off the, uh, the paperwork so that the property can be registered. And the purchasers called the bank and said that they heard a squatter camp is going to come up close by and they are not certain that the value of the property is going to be the best. And the bank called the called up the bond on the morning of transfer. Yes, wow. so it can happen, yeah. Now, what documentation is required by Convincer to verify the identity of the existing and new clients? Obviously, we need the uh, uh, ID document. What documentation is required by the conveyancer to verify the identity of existing and new clients? This is an easy one. Yes, we're saying uh, ID documents. So ID documents, yes. Um, proof of earnings, proof is of it? Yes. Uh, not really proof of earnings because that is the bank that's asking the conveyancers to identify. Proof of okay. current address. Proof of current address, yes. Okay. Another one. Sorry, Rina, just in the uh, why is the proof of current address necessary? Because look, if I'm willing, if I want to buy somewhere and it's my, going to be my residence, why is the current address necessary? Because to verify you, li li listen to this instance, is to verify who you are. Okay. Okay, and then another one, if you are married, your marriage certificate. If you, if you buy on behalf of a company, the resolution. Is, can you think of anything else? Okay, let's try this one. Answer true or false. The legal rights associated with the mortgage bond came into effect only after the mortgage bond has been registered in the deeds office. True or false. Uh, true. To effect registration, a mortgage bond must be prepared by an estate agent and submitted to the deeds office. I would say true as well. But who's doing who's doing the registration at the deeds office? Estate agent or the attorney? Not sorry, not the estate That's agent. False. False. Yeah. In practice, an endorsement is made on the title deed of the mortgage property recording the details of the mortgage bond registered. Okay, great. 
evaluating a property, um, I'm just going to mention this one. Um, that is normally uh, a sworn valuation. Uh, and then the bank appoints the valuator to go out and value the property. Meaning of value. Um, you know, the bank normally doesn't give you uh, the value um, of the property. But what I can say, that if you apply for a 100% bond and the bank values it and gives you that 100% bond, the bank only gives out 80% of the real value of the property. They have to keep themselves at 20% um, in the, as, as a backdoor that if they have to sell that property fast under difficult conditions that there is still uh, a percentage where um, they, they can know that they will sell that property. Um, yeah. Any questions on the value of the property? Factors influencing the value of the immovable property. Property is something which satisfies human needs, and for this reason, people will pay a price to acquire it. The price of that the example. Uh, the value of the property are determined by the following. The usefulness of the pro property is to its owner, the rel relatively scarcity of the property, demand and supply. Usefulness of the property to its owner to determine whether or not a property matches the needs of a buyer. One must analyze all aspects of the property, including the general appearance of the property, the type of accommodation, the age of the property, the general condition of the property, the recreational facilities of the property, well, the property office, the suburb, to view, the view of the property, whether or not the property is close to busy streets and legal restrictions. The rel uh, rel rel relative scarcity of the property, unless property is relatively scarce, it will not command a fair price. That the case where the only one side in the popular suburb is zoned for townhouse development purposes. So can I just, or somebody's speaker is open and it echoes very badly. Dandy. Speakers, please. Okay, I think they can't hear me. Demand and supply. What we will do on this practical one, we I will on uh, tomorrow night. Hello. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, Rina. Sorry, yes, okay. The demand and supply, what I want to say is that we w I will do a practical valuation with you uh, on Lightstone. Taking one property, you can pick your own property, SMS me the property, I can prepare it, and we put it up and I can tell you exactly how you can do a desktop valuation for a client. Uh, and so we are not gonna, I'm not going to spend lots of time on this. I'd rather do it on a practical session. Is that fine? Yes, it is. Okay. Various factors other than price influence the demand of the property for the property. The following can be mentioned. Uh, sorry, I just want to say it sounds to me that it ra it's raining really hard some in some areas in Pretoria, and these people SMS me that they are co going off. So um, the slides are not that much anymore. I think we will just finish the slides for tonight then. Disposable income, if people earn more money and can afford to buy more property, the amount will be increased. Availability of credit, when the credit is ready avail readily available from banks or other financial institutions, it makes it easier for people to buy property and once again, demand will increase. Population, an increase in population means more people will compete for and buy property and demand is likely to increase. Taste and preferences, people might prefer to buy one property rather than uh, another because of current taste and preferences. Value methods, various methods can be employed in estimating the value of the property. 
is comparative sales analysis, the comparable cost method, methods based on the income generated by the, the property. Comparative market analysis, the best and most commonly used method of, for estimating the market value of a residential property is a comparative market analysis, also known as the direct comparison method. So we will cover this as well. And this is the Denver's note. The cost method, although the method of direct comparison is considered the best method for estimating the market value of residential property, there may be circumstances where it is difficult to apply. For example, a house may be so unusual uh, that no comparable properties can be found. Or it may be that in certain areas there may not have been any sales for some time. We will go through this as well and the comparative um, valuation sales analysis. Okay, practical application of a comparable market analysis. Um, having understood the theory of how to arrive at a market valuation, we will do all the, uh, sorry, we will do the market valuation with uh, everything that what, uh, I'm gonna do in the practical. Clarify the valuation assignment. We will also do this in practical. Okay, collect and analyze subject uh, property data. We will do go through that. The property data, we will complete this with that analysis, what that we're going to do. Collect and analyze comparable sales data. Again, the direct comparison approach is based on comparisons between the subject property and similar properties. Okay, number one, the sale must be of a comparable property. And number two is the sale must be a transaction concluded in good faith. Comparable property is one that will appeal to the same potential buyer and the state agent must therefore be aware of the type of buyer to whom the subject property is likely to appeal. To be comparable, a property must be a reasonable substitute in terms of its physical and location characteristics and its legal constraints. Number two, the sale must be transaction concluded in good faith. This means that transactions involving special considerations should not be used as comparables. For example, the sale between relatives cannot be used as a comparable sale because such a sale is often concluded at a relatively low price. Accordingly, the sale price does not reflect the true market value of the property. The sale must have sim similar right items and rights including limited real, uh, uh, real rights, included or excluded. Movable properties such as furniture, contain curtains, stoves and fridges may have been included in the price of a house or some property rights may, might have been excluded for, from a sale, such as when a seller retains a lease for a certain period. And a state agent should furthermore check if any repairs, improvements or changes have been made to the property since the sale. The sale must have occurred under similar financial terms and conditions. Lenient mortgage or loan agreements offered by may result in a higher sale price, whereas a poor sale motivated by severe financial pressure may result in a lower sale price. Eight activity comparable, uh, comparative analysis. Okay, we will divide into pairs and you can discuss this in your groups. Reach a conclusion on market value. Uh, we will do this market value and then we will come to a conclusion on that uh, one specific one. Our facilitate the base. Okay, this is, we will add the market value here. What we we're going to do is we could do the market value and I'm going to send you all the information and documentation. Register servitudes. Servitude is a specific type of limited real right. And remember that. Uh, when you purchase the property, the purchaser must also make sure that he knows there is no servitude. Uh, nobody can register a servitude afterwards. It must be registered prior. That normally servitude goes with the uh, approval of um, a township establishment. So that that specific rights are normally in. Um, our current situation, the residential areas, the services will be either electrical or sewer or water. 
uh, on farms, it can be also a right of way. A person who's not the owner of any movable property normally has no rights in respect of the property. For example, he cannot build on the property, use the water on it, or drive over it. However, the owner of the property may grant to someone else the right to do something in respect of his property. Residential servitude? Yes, yes. Sorry, um, I just wanted to go back to servitude. Can servitude be also defined as boundaries? No. 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 A boundary is a boundary. <laughs> a servitude is a, a, a portion of your property okay. that you are not allowed to build on. Oh, okay. Uh, a panhandle for egos. The road to the panhandle actually belonged, in most instances, belonged to the property in front. But you've got the right of usage of that portion for a road. So that uh, property, the front property is not allowed to build on your road. Okay. And um, the water, sewer actually. Sewer normally runs at the back of your property. Um, and if you come through, if you, you've got a block site with 10, 10 properties, it will, in most instances, be on the eastern, why it is, I can't tell you, on the eastern properties of that block, the, the sewer will go down there. Okay. And those people are not allowed to build. But your back property is allowed to cut through the, your wall and actually cut into your services for the water, uh, for the sewer. Okay. And then on another note is your architect will then design your property and you will also have a sewer line cutting into the main sewer line that's at the back of your property. All right. Okay. Residential servitudes, um, it is when a property is sold, it always sold subject to the limited real rights registered over the property. Uh, then as that, it follows that it is important for an estate agent to know what rights are registered over a property because he must take this into account when marketing or valuating a property. Um, I think I've got a very interesting title deed uh, that I'm going to pull out and I'm going to show it to you. It is on development land and that will actually help you a lot on the zoning of the property. I will also do that with evaluation. Um, I didn't think about it now when I'm reading it. Because your main rights normally has been stated into the title deed, and that is why when you apply for the rights at the municipality, you have to attach the title deed to it so that they can see the restrictions on the title deed. Okay, activity servitudes answer the following two questions. What must an estate agent do if he has the reason to believe that there could be servitudes registered over a property which may materially affect the value of the property? Uh, can somebody think what, just one, what servitude will you say will affect the value of your property? Can someone guess? Uh, let me guess. This is like a wild guess. Um, like I asked you about servitude, I'm, I'm grappling with the concept of servitude. Let me take a wild guess. A uh, street or road? A street or a road, but for me, an uh, electrical line. Okay. Over red line. Uh, it's actually more distracting because, um, you know, you cannot build, there is rules and regulations at, uh, uh, around that electrical line, overhead electrical lines. I think it's four meters this way, four meters that way, that you cannot build. So your, your property gets smaller and smaller, actually. Okay, what must be done if a property is subject to a servitude and the prospective purchaser wishes to buy the property free of the servitude? I 
I'll skip that one. I have no idea. Okay, let's just do it as a wild case ourselves. What must be done if a property is subject to a servitude and the prospective purchaser wishes to buy the property free of the servitude? Now, remember, a servitude, I, I, I will say in this instance, has been registered already. So if there's a sewer line registered on the property, do you think you can cancel that servitude? No. No. So what does the purchaser, the prospective purchaser do? Look for something else then? Or we'll get a discount from the selling price. <laughs> you know, you can negotiate, you can use that, but just like your own property with the land there, uh, you've got a house, you've got a servitude. Now, I come and I said, no, Alex, I want to buy your property, but I don't want the servitude. But that is a servitude out of your hands. You yes. as the seller and owner of that property also purchase the property as it is. Now you sell it as it is. So how can you then negotiate? It depends what type of servitude it is, I think. Yes. Okay, it's like it's from overlines. You cannot negotiate that. That's sorry. Activity 11, you will be required to do this activity on your own. Look at the example box provided on the previous page and answer the following questions. According to the article, there are some instances where services are used for practical purposes. Identify these instances and highlight the implications. Servitudes and property value. The fact that another person has registered limited uh, real right or servitude over the property limits the owner's use of the immovable property and will negatively affect the value of the property. This is a nice one. Use frack. Can somebody try just to explain this before? I, I, I'm not going to read much about it. I think this comes from the older generation, it might be. Yusifrat grants a person who is not the owner of the property, remember, the right to occupy the property and enjoy the fruits thereof. How many of your parents, for in case, are staying on their parents' property by way of using that that that's not the right to stay there, but it's not the property. That property maybe belongs into an estate or onto another person's property. Do you understand this, Yusifra? Yes, yes. I'm currently in the situation where um, my dad bought a house a while ago. He was trying to rent it out. Unfortunately, it was squatted, and then um, for a long time it was squatted, and uh, it's only sometime late, late last year and early this year um, we managed to get the guys out. And now, because the house is in quite a bad shape, I had to move in. I used to manage, it used to be a guest house before and all that. I used to manage it and then left and whatnot. I'm, I'm now coming back in to see to the revamps, the renovations, but in the meantime, I'm staying here and using the house as mine, but it's, it's in my dad's name. Yeah, yeah. That's basically uh, uh, one of the risks. But you can also register this. If your dad approves to that, you can register this using track that you are the person who stays there and you can stay there till you die. Even if your dad passed on in between, you can still stay on there. Nobody can put you off. Okay. How do you go about registering a user Um, You go to uh, any attorney and they will do it for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you are required to do this activity on your own, identify what a use of fact is and under which conditions it is relevant and important. Subject to servitude clause, agreements of sale of a movable property sometimes contain a clause that states that the property is subject to all conditions 
and so that it's recorded in the title record of property. We know this clause, we did read it in the contract. Securities, securities and mortgage finance, there are four main types of security, surety, pledge, notarial bonds and mortgage bonds. And you're quite familiar with this. Also give three examples of where surety can be used. Just give us one or two and you can try this. Surety. When do you sign surety? Um, with the bank, when you're trying to maybe sign for a loan. Okay, sign up for in case your dad wants to purchase a property. Yes. But now his income is, let's guess, 20,000 Rand. Yes. And he doesn't qualify to purchase that property. But if you come on board, you sign surety. The property won't be registered in your name. So if you, as a surety holder, your, the property is not registered in your name. It's only going to get registered in your dad's name. But your income yeah. will be form part of uh, his qualification for this. And yes. then, if he can't pay it, yes, then the bank is on your back. Yeah. Okay. Principal security pledge. Pledge is a right with which a credit has over the movable property of another to secure the repayment of a debt. Should the debtor fail to fulfill this obligation to the creditor, the latter can sell the pledged property and so recover what is owed to them. So you, you give a property as security. Notarial bond, a notarial bond is a bond registered over the removal of property by of a debtor. Unlike a pledge, the property in question need not be delivered to the bondholder. Notarial bonds are sometimes used to obtain finance for the sale of farms and commercial or industrial properties. The notarial bond is then registered over the farming equipment and other machinery. It is not used in residential property transactions. Okay, this is security. What is the difference between principal and collateral security and what is a notarial bond? We've just done that. Activity partic participating bonds act 55 of 1981. I will draw this act and I will post it for you on the group. And that's it for tonight. Well, any questions? Very interesting. That's all I have to say. Now, I think this is quite this is something that one must know. Uh, yeah. The type, different types of bonds, and especially the securities and this thing. It's um, what is the differences and the dangerous part of it as well. Uh, yeah. There is quite you know, surety is a very dangerous thing to do. And can I just mention, um, I think one, um, the intent sometimes is, you like to, we prefer to help our brothers, our, your, your siblings. But you know yes. what, if you sign surety, that surety gets registered against your name if it's on a property. So if you want to buy on your own, then they take off that surety first, so your qualification is smaller. One must be mm. careful for that. Lots of people step into fire just because of that. Mm. So, um, yeah, tomorrow night um, we are going to do a first just the bond registration process and then we will do a few practical. On Wednesday night we will not have a class. I think then you can spend time uh, doing these activities. And then Thursday night we're going to arrange again for the practical. Um, next week I'm going to see if we can finish and then the week after that we're going to start packing the portfolio files. So I'm going to help you from page one throughout to pack the portfolio files. I'm also going after next week when we finish, I'm going to uh, load on the system uh, communication and uh, numeracy. Um, I think uh, those two, you can really do that on your own. Um, because I think for me now to come in <laughs> with your degrees telling you how to write a letter, uh, I, 
it's not going to, you know, I think you're in any case going to get exemption for that. So that is the next um, step that we will take, is I need everybody's um, academ academic uh, results and your degree so that we can apply at the EAAB for you for certain exemptions. But we will do that as well. Any further questions? Thank you, Rina. Uh, yes, then Saturday, please keep it open. Uh, the invitations will come out. Uh, it is our big launch. And as you also saw on the group, the CEO of the e Estate Agents Affairs Board is going to open format officially. And I think it's a very uh, important uh, event for us. So please, if you're registered with format, you have to be there. The invitations will go out in the next day or so. All right. Okay. And all have a very nice evening, blessed evening, and where it rains, stay safe, please, and warm. Thank you, Rina. Safe. Th everyone. Th thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.